Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Lee and Haley Overtime Podcast, brought to you by Damiano Pizza, Pasta, Beer, Bourbon. It's located in Lexington, Kentucky, at 503 South Upper Street. That is on the University of Kentucky's campus, right across from Target. They have all of your favorite Italian dishes. Pastas, pizzas, as we mentioned, spaghetti, meat the ball. It is so good. We love it. We take the staff there all the time. It's the place we love to hang out, watch the ball game, and the happy hour is fantastic. It is so good. They oh. serve what I like to call a three-day pasta because when Lee gets it, the mm-hmm. portion is so large, he eats the leftovers for three days. And we hear about it at work because we're like, what would you have for dinner last night? He's like, still working my way through the pasta. Working my way back to, to you, you, pasta. Babe, meatballs. <laughs> it is so good. And as we've told you, the sauce... Uh, ratio to noodle is absolute heaven. Damiano, 503 South Upper Street in Lexington. You can call for reservations, 859-303-8373 if you like. Please go see them. They are so good. Um, I actually watched a YouTube video the other night on my phone. I do this thing where I see videos. I freaking love YouTube videos. Just love them. And I save a lot of them to watch later, and then I forget about them. Well, the other night, I was going to sleep, and I was getting ready to turn on one of my tried-and-true ASMR videos that help me go to sleep. It's like girls being like... A man being stabbed. Yeah, it's just like soothing. Um, No, uh, it's like, you know, just ASMR crap. Well, anyway, then I realized I'd saved a video ages ago that was like, How they really make tomato sauce in Italy. It was an unintentionally incredibly soothing video. And it's not like at a factory or at a plant in Italy. It was like how families there. It's an old Italian grandmother squeezes it between her breasts. Yeah. And collects the juice. Uh Uh-huh. Yeah, that's exactly what it was. No, and it was just this, some like foodie youtube channel and they all i don't know what they do but this is one video they did and it was this the host was kind of a young girl like probably quite a bit younger than me she speaks english and italian so she would be presenting in english and then she'd talk to the family in italian and they would subtitle it anyway it was a three generation family a grandma like in her 90s a woman in like her 60s and then her daughter that's like 25 Mm -hmm. and they've been making pasta on their family farm or not pasta tomato sauce from their own tomatoes just for them and their family and friends and then they like you know, can it basically, but put it or seal it in these glass bottles and then they, you know, eat on it for Mm -hmm. all the time. It was so fascinating and so basic and so just like pure. I was like, I was like salivating through the screen. It's the way we should be eating. Yeah. As opposed to preservatives and having it delivered via truck mm -hmm. from someplace far away. Yeah. If we were to live optimally, we would would have our own gardens. And live like Martha Stewart. If you <laughs> you can't have a garden in prison, I Actually, love you, Martha. She did. She did. That's right. If you get one of those fancy prisons, well, I mean, imagine because there was a, a a lifer, not a lifer, but she was in there for at least twelve years. This lady with rudimentary tools, nothing really to do, and but she loves to garden. And they do. You're right. That was a dumb statement. They do. I've seen that but before. All of a sudden, you get news. That your new cellmate is Martha Stewart. Get out of here. Who is the house making maven, yeah. Gardener of America. Gardening is like her thing. And she go and Martha says, This lady, she didn't have anybody to talk to about gardening, and then I show up. Oh, so it was a happy thing that Martha yes. was Oh, I thought she was gonna be like Martha's gonna get in here and try to tell me how to garden. Well, Martha did do that. Yeah. That's what Martha does. But still, I mean she, she said this lady all of a sudden had this world open up to her because someone who is interested in the same thing yes but knows everything about it right and now i can talk to her about this Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. from the lady's perspective martha was talking about the inmate's perspective cool to be there for 12 years to have a passion of gardening with no real vast knowledge the way martha had but also none of the resources and martha you know for whatever she had to do trade favors would get (laughs) him Garden tools. People sneaking s- snap pea seeds in, yeah. <laughs> in and they, between their and breasts. And she served all they She goes, we got to have something to focus on. Martha organized a cucumber sandwich party, and they all did cucumber sandwiches that they grew in the garden. Look, I never want to go to jail, prison, any version of it. But if I did. You go with Martha. I want to go with Martha. You know she's going to be doing the craziest stuff. Just like making it luxe somehow. I liked in the uh, roast, she talked about first thing you do to make a shank. You know, she described it. And you go stab the biggest 
I won't say the word, the biggest girl there. Mm. Let them know you're not going to be bullied. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And she goes, and I did it with, I forgot all the fancy terms she used. Oh, yeah. She, yeah. Like a, you know, a blueberry scone, <laughs> the way she describes that stuff, how to make a shank. She's so good. So if you haven't watched the new uh, Martha documentary on Netflix, it's literally just called Martha. Lee has watched it. Bridget has watched it. They both said it was absolutely fantastic. I really want to watch it because the clips I've seen on TikTok are hilarious. I forgot how like Martha doesn't I give a hoot. She's just you know? a, we forget that she's a self-made billionaire. Was was she's not worth a billion anymore? I don't think so. I think she lost her company stock was at trading at a hundred something. Yeah, and dropped down to three dollars. This good. This is good. It gives me a chance to say my favorite joke. So. She has lost so much money, she's having to share a helicopter with another family. Yeah, right. Oh, you hate to see it. Mm -hmm. I stole that line, and I love it so much, from a movie that's fantastic, Two Weeks Notice. Mm -hmm. Rom-com, Sandra Bullock, Hugh Grant. Mm -hmm. And he's incredibly wealthy, but then he takes like a business hit to be with her because he hates the business he's in, et cetera, et cetera. And he's like, we're poor now. And she's like, we are? And he's like, well, we're going to have to share a helicopter with another family. Yeah. <laughs> Just I love that line. Mm -hmm. Anyway, so, uh, but yeah, watch that movie. Watch Martha on Netflix and also watch Two Weeks Notice. There's a scene where she's trying to help him with his belt loop. They're just working together. This is not romantic or anything like that. And she's trying to help him. His, like, belt gets stuck on something, and she leans down to try to help him, and her hair gets caught on the belt loop. Well, someone walks in, and it looks like they're in the middle of just an unsavory sex act in the men's room at the <laughs> office. And she's like, no! Yeah. Like she hates it. It's one of those where the classic rom com, they hate each other and then they love oh, yeah. each other. So watch that. What is your favorite? That's a good question. What's your favorite Sandra Bullock rom com? Because she was the queen of that in the early 2000s. While you were sleeping. Yeah. Well, that's a good one. That's mm -hmm. Bill Pullman. Mm -hmm. Bill Pullman. I kind of like the proposal with Ryan Reynolds. Oh, the proposal is so good. I mean, Sandra, the proposal is so good. For me, it truly is a toss up between two weeks notice and while you were sleeping. While you were sleeping is very nostalgic for me. My mother loves that mm -hmm. movie. And I watched it a ton when I was a kid with my mom. And so for me, when I think of it, I think of my mom, who I adore very much. And so I, it's just cut. I'm sorry, am I bothering you? No, ma'am. I'm I'm getting our content ready for I can do both. I'm listening to you. I'm listening to you. I, I'm so sorry. I was just making a joke. I no need to panic. Well, you acted offended. And I am. <laughs> well, was it I Not was offended. trying to get, I'm sorry. You go ahead. No. Guys, Lee has been stickerly assaulting our team this morning. Lee accidentally, in our Lee and Haley show group text, our entire staff is on it, and we kind of discuss everything throughout the day on there. It's like uh, our Slack channel. Well, Lee accidentally sent a sticker in the text. Well, at first I accidentally created a sticker. I didn't even know how that happened. Right, right. I'm like, what is that? We're in a group text. It's a picture of me wearing a cowboy hat. Yeah, but and, you may... And I was in photos. I wasn't even in text. I think if you press and hold on a photo, it will yeah, create a sticker out of the photo. created a sticker. And then I'm falling asleep or whatever. I'm on the phone and my thumb hits sticker. And I accidentally send you guys a sticker. I go, mm -hmm. how did I do that? What is that? And to quote what you always say is... I, if I wasn't there, but I imagine this is what you thought. Have I just done something wonderful? <laughs> and I did. That's what Lee always and says then I thought, when well, he does something here. that's good, in his opinion, that he didn't mean to do. Well, the genius of this <laughs> that's what you always say too. is all of a sudden I go, well, wait a minute. Instead of those stupid emojis, yeah. I've got a thousand photos of myself. Yes! I could just send one of my emotive faces. Exactly. Because you do. You're an emoter. Mm -hmm. And then I... Then I started every time somebody make a comment, I would share my emotion about that comment with yeah. my face. So good. Instead of an emoji. Well, then I saw you guys got irritated with that, and then I doubled down. Oh, yeah. Then you're like, oh, man. Watch this. Is this. So, good. so let me just read y'all a little um, snippet of our conversation. So Bridget floats a work-related idea, and we're all like, yeah, sounds good. Sounds good. So then Lee... You Okay. You'd never make it in the homemade tomato canning business. <laughs> I dropped my lid. He dropped his lid from his, his Diet Coke. Okay, so Bridget sent in a work idea about something we could film, and she's like, mm -hmm. all right, sounds good. So Lee then replies with a photo of himself in a cowboy hat, <laughs> but it's a sticker photo. So then the question was about making guacamole. So then Lee replies with a cowboy hat, and Bridget's like, y'all want to do this? Lee replies with that, and Noah Day says, it looks like a yes to me. Like, he's ready for guac. Yeah. 
Then Lee just starts spamming us with stickers of himself. A photo of him <laughs> at a horse track, a photo of him on a horse waving from behind. Uh-huh. Then he starts replying to each text we have with another smaller version of said photo. Mm-hmm. Then one of he and his buddy in their stupid costumes for Halloween. Finally, and none of us are replying to any of these. We're all just continuing the work-related conversation, yet Lee is having a separate conversation. <laughs> just, oh, you were loving it. You were happy, and that's why we didn't want to say I it. would giggle yeah, every time. I know you would. Every time I bet you I'd would. see you guys communicate Wait, and add a sticker. Were you I'd laying in the bed? and giggle. In my mind, you were laying on the bed like this and going, hey, no, I don't know hey, what I was. I think I was in the shower or getting, <laughs> I was getting ready or getting oh, out of the just, shower. And I would check my phone and go put on, and I'd hear a ting. And then I'd come over and what you guys write. The other reviews in. And let me send a sticker. And then I'd go back to the closet and I'd be over there giggling. <laughs> <laughs> They're going to love that one. <laughs> I do love that. There's nothing like that when you send a hilarious text. Yeah. And you just are like, I am blessing those in this text chain with right. me. They're so excited. So then I. N- what does it look like on your phone? Uh, oh, wow. Yeah, these first three ones were big. Now the rest of them are small. Oh. Except that one. But see, now look so how small big? they are. big. Well, at first I'm, you sent basically like a sticker picture. So it was like the whole picture, but you uh, deleted the background. Then you started getting fresh and putting them as reactions to yes, different texts. And yes. so it's tiny photos of you. Yeah, right. Yikes. That's what I thought they all were. <laughs> tiny photos. <laughs> at first, I had no idea they were No, at first you sent a couple of backgroundless sticker photos. Yeah. And then you just started sending stickers. So finally, Nua says... Lee, did you just discover stickers? And all of us are like, damn it, you can't comment on it or you won't let it go. <laughs> so Nua said, Lee, did you just discover s- stickers? And Bridget says, LOL. And then I just what said, Fine. you replied with three stickers, That's multiple right. stickers. One of him That's is like a high school basketball player. Making a jumper. That one is. of you smiling with reflective blue sunglasses on. The same one of you on the horse looking backwards, but small now. Yeah. So then I finally find I say, Lee, this is an intervention. We love you, but we care too much not to say something. He puts a sticker on it. So I said, guys, he's resisting. He replies with two more stickers. One of him near a huge piggy bank. Another in a Top Gun Maverick knockoff. And I said, I am the resistance. Suit. And he said, I am the resistance. And I said, no, honey, you're mentally ill. And he posted a photo of him with a cigar on the golf course. So he doesn't care. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Nikita's not at work, and she must be at a boozy lunch because we requested, hey, what is everybody's questions you want Lee something? and I to reply? She not only replied with her own questions, she replied with questions from her two friends that she's at lunch with as well. I just assume they're at lunch, unless they're all in prison together, unless they're in a holding cell. They might yeah. be in a drunk tank. Hmm. I, uh, what is it Nikita did yesterday that was... she? Her and I had a two-margarita lunch... Uh, and what was it she did? Um, well, crap. Anyway, maybe it was three margaritas. Yeah, I was going <laughs> to say, remember. I am loving this story. I wish you could put it to stickers. Oh, I know what it was. So you guys had a two and I, we, we went to uh, a little uh, Mexican place. Yeah. And I went in the wrong way under her advice. <laughs> so and it's, then, it's an exit. Oh, and, but I pulled in there. I'm like, Nikita. Oh, Nikita. in the car? Yes. Oh, I, did, I just walked it. Oh, you pulled no. in the wrong way into the parking lot. And yes. it was a firm And if exit. there was another car coming, there was nothing did that could be Did she do done. what I've trained people to do is never acknowledge you've made a mistake. Yeah. So if you pull in the wrong way and I've told you to do it, I'm like, what are you doing? Yeah. That's <laughs> what did she do? What or was she just like. <laughs> well, we, yeah, we learned the lesson. But this was before the margarita? Yeah, of course, because yeah, you can't well, drink and drive. Yes. Never mind. Why did I say that? No, it was before, yeah. Yeah. Oh, man. Anyway. What's new with you? Um, Let's see. So we... Our entire staff has voted now. Of course, this is after the election. Yeah, this They're has come out. This. So and whatever has happened, we don't know yet. Yeah, we're taping this in the morning on election you, day. You, my friend, are a time traveler. If you're listening to this, you know our future. We do not know it. And <gasps> I'm praying and hoping that you actually do know the future and that this thing isn't still being counted whenever oh you're listening gosh. to this. No, my favorite thing to do is go to sleep about 11 p.m. when it's still undecided and wake up to whatever the news is. Yeah. I can't take it. I can't stay up. I late. usually stay up and watch the whole thing develop. I have before. But most of the time when I was a kid, I'd wake up and see what it was. So I've just kind of... 
It's the surprise of it all. It was so But yeah, you're right. We are so dumb in this moment, guys. You all know, as Lee said, if it's not still being counted, if it's done being counted, yeah, Lee and I at this moment are completely oblivious at the time we're typing this. In real life, we know. But... Do we? Unless they haven't counted them. Um, Actually, this morning, I put one of my favorite easy Crock-Pot recipes in the Crock-Pot. So when I get home today and I just park on the couch and watch Endless News, I'll have it. My friend Claire showed me this recipe, and it is the easiest thing, and you can do so much with it. It's just... I had a vivid dream about her the other day. My friend Claire? Yeah. No, I mean, your friend, too, but... Yeah. What happened? I mean, you guys are besties, but, you know, I, I can't recall right now, but I... We were you literally a, just said vivid, and now vivid. you don't. Was like, this after your two margarita it's lunch? Claire. Yeah. You know, and, I, and I'm talking to Claire about something, and I don't know why that was happening. Again, most of my dreams are weird and trivial and tedious. It's me doing some tedious uh, and they're so uh, me too, and it's so frustrating. You can't get it done. Right. Most of my dreams are I cannot accomplish whatever it is I'm trying to do. Mm-hmm. Anyway, it's called salsa chicken. And literally, you just dump two chicken breasts in the crock pot and dump a jar of salsa in there. Just chicken breasts, not the whole chicken. No, just the two chicken breasts. The chicken's not alive. The chicken is not alive. It's just the breast. (laughs) Or it did have an augmentation and it's Mm. out there looking fresh. Um, And a jar of salsa. And you cook it on low for six to eight hours. You come home, you shred the, take the chicken out, shred it up, put it back in there, mix it up. And you can use it on top for like tacos. You can use it for quesadillas. You can use it on top of a salad, whatever. Yeah. So, but I always zhuzh mine up a little bit. So I do chicken breasts, a whole jar of salsa. I think I use pace. Um, I had Chinese spicy chicken this morning. You did? Well, you know I'm on the antibiotic. Oh, that's right. So I thought, well, yeah. I'm not going through that again. No, no, no. So I had Yesterday, let- Lee nearly threw up at the office because he took an antibiotic on an empty stomach. His fault? Of course. I had leftovers. And um, from Shun Lee. And I... Uh, <laughs> you know they could see you, you big idiot. <laughs> I know, but I love Shun Lee. Anyway, and I, uh, I had leftovers, and then this morning I ate a... A considerable size of that, and then had to lay down for a moment after the medication. And you thought now was a good time to send a few sticky, sticky stickers. That's when all the fun began. <laughs> well, I'm proud you ate. So then you took the antibiotic after. No, I took it before. Oh gosh! But I covered it in spicy chicken. Yeah. So I'm good. Now. Antibiotic, spicy chicken. It hit at the same so time, good. so it negated the effects of nausea. Oh yeah. Well, so I, I'm a salt girl. I love salt. Not as much as Lee loves salt, but I do like it. So I season my chicken breasts like I would if I was going to grill them. So I do salt, pepper, garlic powder, onion powder on the chicken. Mm-hmm. Then also the salsa. Then I also, because I love grilled onions for a Mexican restaurant, mm-hmm. then I also slice up one yellow onion and throw it in there too. Mm-hmm. So it's yeah. going to be delicious. 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 I'm sure my dogs are smelling it right now while they're at home and they're like, what does she have in there? You know what we need to do when we get back? Because we're going to take a few days off. Yeah. Um, and I wish we had done it before. We've got those negative ad campaigns we ran against each other. We should have put those out. Way to go. I could put those out today on social media. That's true. You should. I could. Today being the day we're taping this, election mm-hmm. day. So if you've already seen them, they're two days old. But. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Jokes on you! They're like seven years old, actually. Yeah, they are. <laughs> um, okay. But I, and Claire was in that one. She was in that ad. That's right. Yeah, Claire and our meteorologist friend Jill Zwid. That's right. That's right. And your nephews, when they were little, inexplicably smoking a cigar. Well, you got to teach them. You got to teach them. Sure. Anyway, so I'm going to leave home, or leave home, I'm going to leave work today, and when I get home, I'm going to tuck into a salsa chicken. I bought taco shells, but I don't know if I want those. I may just do a salad with it on there. Mm. So, what? You and I are going to make guac today. We are. That's right, because later in the month, it is, yeah, um, in case you don't know, November 14th is National Spicy Guacamole Day. So today we are making guac Wait from minute. scratch. Why didn't you tell me it was spicy? Well, I'm not going to make spicy guac because I'm not going to eat spicy. I love spicy Well, we can guac. put a little uh, something on yours. We can dip you some out. juice. <laughs> no. Say that again. Juice. No. Juice. That's what I said. Juice. No. <laughs> No, don't wink at me. You knew what he, he just did like a half-hearted wink, like I knew men to do that. 
I think mean, you uh, did nobody, on second pass. Nobody saw that but you. Is that just your lazy eye? That's no. my sty. That's my sty. Your sty's in your other eye. I know. <laughs> it affects the other one because it's doing twice the work now. That's right. Um, Anybody who suffer from that. This from is what? a new phenomenon. What is? A sty in your eye. No, it's not. It is to me. <laughs> okay, I was like, people I've been are... <laughs> operating the system for quite a few decades. I thought you meant as a medical issue. It's no. brand new. I was like, I had one when I was a kid. What are you I talking never about? had one when I was a kid. Really? Very clean tear ducts. Mm-hmm. Unbelievable. I, I got conjunctivitis. Some people say I eye. had the greatest tear ducts, they would say. They would say that? Some people would. What happened? It's, it's a gantry. Some people... <laughs> Some people call it a gantry. They call it a gantry, Joe. (laughs) Lee was talking about Trump's interview on the Joe Rogan podcast. He pointed out one of the way, there's so much to pick apart of how Trump speaks, but one is that he likes to tell you, he likes to give him, they call it. Like you've never heard the word gantry. He's like, so anyway, they catch it in the gantry. They call it a gantry. Some people call it a gantry. Others call it a gantry. I wouldn't have called it that, but that's what they They call call it. It's a wonderful word. They call it a gantry. He's so fun to imitate. It's hilarious. Um, I wish I could do it. I wish you could too. Um. Anyway, so we could zhuzh yours up with some extra like pepper or something. Maybe we could put All some right. cayenne in there. Well, I think we got some hot sauce here, don't we? Oh, hot sauce. So- <gasps> delicious, delicious, delicious. Yeah. yeah, so guys, make yourself some guac. You want to uh, get to some of the questions from our... Um... Uh, sure. All right, let's see. A unique animal you'd have as a pet. Now, I always thought about a chimpanzee. Uh, who sent this? Bridget. Bridget. Okay, guys, um, send your questions every week to ideas at leanhaley.com. We actually have a viewer or listener submitted question coming up in just a minute that we'll get to that's a good question. Uh, but anyway, so this was submitted by Bridget. What is it? A unique animal. Oh. You'd like to have Unique as a New York. Pet. Unique New York. I would. I always thought when I was younger a chimpanzee, but then, you know, uh, as they age, they, they get weird <clears throat> and they can rip your face off. That is the thing. The face ripping off possibility did you ever see the interview that uh what's her name uh not is it diane jane goodall jane goodall thank you i will say diane foster <laughs> who's that jody foster no who's diane foster let me google watch it be like she's an, an accountant near you <laughs> anyway uh, jane diane goodall. foster yeah who is that oh i just googled diane fister that's not right no that's diane foster is a canadian actress oh anyway but of Ukrainian descent. Yes. She's hot as Let me see hell. Her. Oh, yes. Well, Old Hollywood back in the day. Right. Red hair. Jane Goodall, back to Jane Goodall, said. I wish you'd get back to her instead of talking about someone we don't even know. Uh, Stephen Colbert asked her, what, who, what's your favorite animal? Do we even have to know? And she goes, well, it's not chimpanzees or gorillas. But isn't that what she's famous for yeah. working with? Yeah, she goes, they remind me too much of people. Some of them are lovely and wonderful. Others are just downright mean and nasty. So Like humans. No. She goes, my favorite animal is a dog. Because a dog is unconditional love. It's the thing that will always be there for you, no matter what. I love my dogs. Yeah, they love me more. No, they don't. They yeah, don't. they do. No, they don't. Why would my dogs love you more? Why does that hurt you so much? Because, okay, that would be like... But you I, telling your brother, your son simply loves me more. You don't think that well, would hurt him? I mean, there may be a chance. Just because the oldest one now texts you from his phone at I, school. Does he have a phone or a... Uh, well, I guess he does have a phone. What do you think he has? A windmill that he stands on and hollers out and you hear? No, I thought he was doing a... What's it called? A face pad. <laughs> Whatever it's called. <laughs> iPad. Nice. Yeah. Anyway, a face pad. Please but, go but to Apple I, and say, I, I, "Let me see your face." Pad. I'm not saying your dogs don't love you. What I'm saying is they may be more excited to see me. It's the novelty of you. No, no, <laughs> there's nothing new about me. Actually, no, they are excited to see me every single day. They jump all over me and are so yeah, happy. Well, every that's single their day. job. But there's a special connection okay. that I have with Ollie, and it has developed with Charlie as well. Okay, slices of pepperoni are not a special feeling. Oh, you think it's all... You just looked like, damn, she got me. <laughs> well, yeah, <laughs> but I see... I don't... There was a little flicker I caught of you like, oh, shit. <laughs> I, yeah, but you think it's all affectation that they're faking it. Because oh, they look at me I'm, and wink once they get their treat from you. They're I'm like, got pe- him. I'm pepperoni man. And don't you forget. 
Yeah. No, like, imagine if, of course that hurts me because it's offensive, honestly. No, it's A, because it's not true, but B, like, imagine your brother and you're like, hey. And he's like, man, my boys, they they love me. And you're like, oh, man, yeah. Not as much as me. Not as much as they love me. Their uncle, who they never really see. What do you mean I mean, they, they see, see you, but they live with him and he provides for them and cu- kisses on them and hugs them. You put them in I headlocks kiss, to I, kiss on them. Well, because it won't hold still. Rightly, they don't love you, okay? No, they do love you. I find it weird when you'll say they say, Uncle Lee. It just seems so weird to hear you, like. What do you mean? Now, your brother has older kids, too. He has the younger kids that are, like, middle school age. And then he has others that are, like, in their. Adults. Adults. Do they call you Uncle Lee? Yep. Weird. Should I get the staff to start calling you Uncle Lee? No. What should my dogs call you if they develop the ability to speak? Oh, father. <laughs> With a monocle. Because a corgi would have a monocle. Father in the religious ter- terms? Yeah, sure, yeah. Fatherly. <laughs> Forgive me, for I have... Now, your dad is a pastor. He's not father, because he's not Catholic. But he's Pastor Cruz? That's what people call him? Yeah. I assume... Well, it, I don't dock in the well, jaw. I, it's weird over there in the Protestant world, you know, because some people say pastor, some people say preacher, some people say brother. Minister. Reverend. Reverend. The good reverend. Mm-hmm. And it depends on denomination, I guess. I don't know. It does. I think it depends on denomination, region. I think whatever. he m- mainly goes by pastor. Yeah. 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 Which is a term of shepherd, right? Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, I guess so. Yeah. Um. Okay. What's next? Oh, well. Let's see here. Who uh, wrote? It is. Uh, what, what is your unique animal? You haven't told me that. Oh. Well, what's yours? You haven't told me either. Well, I said chimpanzees out. Right, but that's not the answer. Right. I, sometimes I thought, and I did. I seriously considered a cockatoo or three. Ugh. But I mean. Uh, your body, your choice. <laughs> but no, I a, a parrot or one of those guys that outlive you. I think I've seen something weird. I saw it at the ball game the other day. What in the world's going on with torti? <laughs> People are bringing tortoises around now. Do what? And I don't mean like the kind Richard has in his dish bowl at the house. I'm talking... Out of context, that is the weirdest sentence. I'm not talking about Richard and the little thing he has in his dish bowl. You're talking about a big... Galapagos tortoise. The kind that you and I met... The big ones that's like... Down there at the Greensboro... Science Center. Yeah, Science Center. Thank you. Botanical Garden, whatever it was. It was actually Greensboro Science Center, as I said originally. That kind of, I saw that, I saw one of those being pulled in a wagon Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. at the game. You are lying. Nope. At a college football game? Yes. And you didn't take a picture of it? I might have, but it went by me pretty quickly. I'll hold to see the sticker of it. (laughs) It went by you quickly? We're talking about a person pulling it. Yes. Not the tortoise. A 200 pound animal. Why would they bring it to a tailgate? I don't know. They they were using a shell as advertisement. Like, it was a billboard for, you know, the football team or something. I don't know, but the guy was walking around with it. I was like, look at that thing. It's the same size as the ones you and I were petting. Huge. And feeding. Guys, they were huge and Somebody so cool. else saw one the other day. What's going on with tortoises? I don't know, Lee. The giant tortoise. Huge. Yeah, they're kind of fun. So you would get one of those? Nah. Oh, you How wake you... up in the morning and he's in the bed next to you. How do you get him out of there? <laughs> Can't. He roll him over, crack a shell. Oh my God, that's murder! Murder, murder in Savannah. And you can't pick him up; he's too heavy. How, yeah. do, you, how do you bathe a guy mm. like that? Does he like to be bathed? I feel guilt and sadness over our little guinea pig that died of a heart attack when we were kids at my house. So I'd like to think because they're cute and fuzzy and furry. So I think a guinea pig or a hamster. Would... From the shock of what? What do you mean? He had a heart attack. My mom. <laughs> This thing was, lived in a cage in our house, and it was cute, and his name was Curly. Yeah, and my mom one day said she felt bad for it, and she thought she'd let it run around in the garden for a little bit. Well, the garden backed up to the fence where the dogs were, and there was a little hole, and it, right as it passed by, <laughs> the dog grabbed it and pulled it through the fence and oh. didn't eat it, just grabbed it and held it in its mouth like, 
Yeah. Now what am I going to do? It had no external injuries, no internal injuries. My mom starts screaming. The dog, do- dog drops it. My mom brings it in and puts it back. My mom said while she was holding it, its little heart was like. <laughs> she just puts it. It's like everything's okay. Everything's okay. She comes back <laughs> a short time later and it is belly up, legs to the sky, D E A D dead. Mm-hmm. My dad comes home and is like, my dad, a veterinarian, comes home and is like, he died of a heart attack, Anne. What were you thinking releasing him into the wild where the dogs could get, I don't know. My mom sobbed. All of us kids are sobbing. It was like seeing a bloodbath, even though there was no blood. Yeah. So sometimes when I think about having an animal, I just feel like we never got the full guinea pig experience with sweet little Curly. What is that anyway? I don't know. They just, I, I want to hold them. I know. That we have, used to have a guy work for us that had guinea pigs. It was his, it was but that at the behest of his at the time girlfriend. What he is really the, didn't care for him. Why? I don't think. I mean, what do you I, get out of that? I don't want a host of them. What would you get out of one? Cuddles. Oh come on, that's not real I love. I didn't knock you. You didn't even give an answer. I'm working on it. Spit it out, Sister Christian. Well, I saw a tweet the other day. You know how people say. <clears throat> my brother in Christ in jokes on Twitter. You know, people will say that really in, re- in you know religion, my brother in Christ, my sister in Christ, but people will say it out of context of that and just say as a way to relate to someone on Twitter and like funny stuff. And someone said, <clears throat> you know, a lot of people say like, um, my sister in Christ, no, you do not need to be doing that. Mm-hmm. Well, a girl the other day goes, my bitch in Christ. Yeah, <laughs> and I was don't like, be doing that. Oh, yeah. God. I, uh, maybe a pig. Oh. A hog, you know. <laughs> not a little poor... Pot belly, like no. those little bitty cute ones. You want a Something big ass. Something in the house that moves furniture when it tries to eat with you. Yeah, I, I don't know. I, I think a dog is fine. Dogs are I don't not need weird. You're the animal. worst. <laughs> okay, next. Well, Kelly wants to know what to do during a beach rain out. Oh no, yeah, Kelly is at the vacation. beach right now with her family. I hope she's just asking hypothetically. I hope I they're not getting she rained is. out. Well, Kelly, go to the movies, go to the movies, go to the movies, work on a family puzzle, play cards, watch Jaws, Mm -hmm. because you can't get in the water anyway. Um, Read a book. Kelly loves to read. Whatever you do, do not talk to your family. Mm -hmm. Do not get into any family discussion about anything the least bit important, because the gray day is already and we're leaning into seasonal affective disorder season. You don't want to get into any family trauma. So Talk, but keep it super surface, okay? Now, Nikita's at a cocktail party, like you said. Yes. Yeah. You knew that? No, I just based on the reply she gave to the group where she listed three questions. One from, from her and her two that friends. that aren't part of the staff. They're friends of ours, but yeah. Mm-hmm. They want to know about special powers. What would it be? We've had this discussion before. I think the one that's safe for me is the, the ability to fly. Because if I have the ability of invisibility, I'm going to do something I shouldn't do. Like poop in the women's? Like, what is that? That's it? <laughs> right. Now, here's my question. Mm-hmm. If you have invisibility mm-hmm. and you go to the bathroom, once it leaves your body, yeah, can yeah. you see it? I don't know. Maybe it's still invisible, too. But it's no longer a part of you. Yeah. Well, I don't know. See, I don't know. Like, do you have to be naked to be invisible? Because your clothing is still here, right? Yes. So wintertime... The I wouldn't be using it as much. No, they'd be like, look at that parka walking by itself. Yeah. Um, mine is first flying, second. Um I would like the ability to know all the lottery numbers at any time. Yeah. But again, because then much... I'd want to win once, but then I'd want to help people win. Well, they're not gonna let you play. After you won like but five I'm or also, six times, I'm also you're... invisible. Yeah, so no. they can't see. No, you're right. That was stupid. That was really dumb. Forgive me, everyone. Flying it is. Yeah, well, I had a, a thought. You know what? I, a superpower I'd love to have is to be able to play any musical instrument. Yep. Proficiently. Yep. That's like a I good could one. just sit <clears throat> into a band and whether it's tuba, piano, oboe, whatever, and I just kill it. Slay. Best yeah. it's ever been done. Any instrument. Yeah. Because it's group participatory. Participatory, you're helping the band, yeah. or you're a solo artist at the mall sitting at the piano and just yeah. hammering away. Yep, show tunes. Okay, so That's flying is top billing, and I think that will be the most popular answer anywhere. Mine, secondly, would be invisibility. Lee's would be 
musical instrument proficiency. What animal at the zoo do you most identify with? Why so many animal questions? I don't know. Who sent that? Our friend? Her friend? Mm Mm-hmm. Amy. (sighs) Honestly, I don't identify with it, but I'm still heavy on the moo ding train. Oh, that little hippo? That little pygmy hippo or whatever it is. Yes, he's hilarious. And he's got his little greased up skin. Mean. He's so cute. But he's mean. He's is he in China? A zoo in China or Thailand? Something like that. Um, somewhere in Asia. And um, I don't really identify with him, although I do a little bit. Like, I feel like childlike Haley was fractious like that sometimes. So I love Moo Ding. If you don't know what I'm talking about, just Google Moo, M O O, separate word Ding, D E N G. And he is a, the you know, remember Fiona, the hippo that went viral a few years ago at the Cincinnati Zoo? Moo Ding is the new right. hot animal in the world zoo circuit. Moo Ding. Moo Ding. What about you? Is there anything you see at the... I guess silverback. <laughs> and why? Well, I don't know. I'd sit there and sit on a rock and look at people and mm-hmm. trash talk them. Yep. Throw excrement. Well, not always. Sometimes I throw a rock. Yeah, that's good. It's good. I love that video of the bears at the zoo where people were throwing sandwiches and the bears waving them over, <clears> literally <throat> with his paw up, motioning mm. this way. Send a sandwich this way. Yes, I have. I love that. Yeah, that's a good one. Um, anything else? What's well, another one? Uh, well, the last one from uh, Nakata is, um, what'd she say? She says, where'd she go? Here she is. What age growing up was your favorite? Wow. I was probably 14 or 15. Really? Yeah. Man, that is a... I've never had this question posed to me before. 17 wasn't bad. Now, why is that? 18, maybe. Well, I don't know. 17, maybe a few things happened to me. What? Well, I uh, I became a man that summer. Oh my gosh, you voted? Mm-hmm. Is that what you mean? <laughs> and I said yes <laughs> to no. veto pocket power. That's right. What? <laughs> You're the worst person I know. Yeah. Um, I let's see. Sixteen was really fun, like getting my license and having more autonomy and hanging out with my friends. But I think anybody at that age, it's also very difficult because you're dealing with social, you know, cliques and things like that, especially for girls. That was a hard time, but also a really good time as well. I loved just being a little kid that didn't worry about anything. Like I I always had anxiety, but I'm just trying to think when I felt the most free. And I think it's when I was little and didn't care about anything. Mm-hmm. It was just party rocking at all times. Yeah. So I'd say like little, little, like six, seven, eight, just playing with my siblings a lot. And then, like, 16-ish, when I got my driver's license and all my friends, and we'd all hang out. And it was so cool. I remember the first time, like, we would drive places together. It was like, oh, my gosh, this is crazy. Yeah. Okay. We have a viewer submitted. Que- oh, yeah. Oh, yes. Go oh, were you going to say you disagreed? No, no. I, I agree with you. Okay. Uh, this was submitted by Brenda James, a viewer of the Lee and Haley show and also a listener of Lee and Haley Overtime Podcast. She said, have you ever stolen a street sign before? I have not, but a girl stole one for me. <gasps> and it's like Lee Street or Lee Avenue. Oh, my gosh. When was this? I don't this? know where that is now. Oh, this is when I was in college. Yeah. She stole it. and did, It's so, always so much bigger than you think it is. Yeah. That's what she said. When she brought the sign. So she brought it to you, and what was it, to woo you? Were you already dating, or was she trying to court you? She was trying. She was trying. Trying too hard, I thought. Oh, yeah. Yeah. One time, I never stole a street sign. I know my little brother did, because mysteriously in his bedroom... There were street signs lined up over the doorways in his room, like a stop sign and one that said like Harmon Hollow or Mm -hmm. something or Jackson Lane. Mm -hmm. So I think he and his buddy stole them. My sister and I and my cousin, one time we stole some cones, like the orange street cones from a neighborhood. We don't know why. And then we also, this is horrible. We got in huge trouble. And when I tell you we got in huge trouble, I mean huge trouble. Um. My, yeah, my sister and I and my cousin, we were in high school, like early high school. 
And yeah, we went into this newly, this neighborhood being built and we went in there. We didn't steal street signs. They didn't have them up. I think that's why we initially went there. Well, then we just ended up stealing the big orange caution cones Mm -hmm. and then we pushed over some porta potties. Ooh. Yeah. Did you check to make sure they were empty? Well, it was like 11 o'clock at night. And so no one was there, but we pushed them over. I have had many a night walking home where I thought, thank God, here's a porta pot. (laughs) So a guy like me could have been in there. What would that have sounded like if some you hear three girls you like would, you would have, all three of us pushing? You would have heard me go, "Hey!" <laughs> I wish that's our origin story of how we met. <laughs> I'd kill for that to be our origin story. I like that thing I sent you today of the lady. She she nailed it too. When people are knocking on the bathroom stall or door, and it. You, becomes so awkward because you don't know what to say. There is no correct thing. She, I always say, like, uh, just a minute. She, uh, and she, she said, ran no. through three or four different scenarios. Like, uh, <laughs> no, no, thanks. Yeah, being out a minute. See you outside. <laughs> I don't know why I do this, but whenever that happens, I do a female high pitched voice. <laughs> you do. Who is it? <laughs> yes, you do. I always just say, just a minute. I don't know why. Um, but anyway, so we... Kept... Why don't I say, come on in? Well, you're dropping an invisible doo-doo? I don't yeah, think so. That's what I, I should start going, well, come on in here. Oh, thank God. Sorry. Or just say, oh, thank God you're here. Yeah. <laughs> that's what you do. Make them run away right. in shame. DoorDash? <laughs> Is that you? <laughs> but anyway, so I remember we got home and my we told my mom about it and she got on to us but was like, Girls, do not do that again. That was it. Well, then my aunt found out oh, and was no. enraged. And what business tried... is it of hers? Exactly. Exactly right. Well, because my cousin was involved. Oh, so she had a kid. So involved. my mom was like, girls, that was not good. Do not do that again. Why did you tell them? I don't know. Well, we you had thought the... they thought it would be funny. Well, my mom is cool. And so I think oh. my cousin may have told her. Mm-hmm. And I don't know. For some reason, we told her and it was like, no big deal. Well, then, I mean, it wasn't, it wasn't, it's that thing where your mom's like, well, you've already done it. Can't do anything about it now, but don't ever do that again. It was kind of like that. We're like, okay, well, sorry. I think she came outside in one of the the traffic cones were in the back of the car. She was like, what's this? And we were like, what? Well, then my aunt finds out and my aunt is furious and tells us we need to call the company that's doing the construction and apologize and tell them we did it. Mm. And then she and my mom got into it. My mom was like, no, they're not going to do that. That's what they did is horrible, but they could get in serious trouble. Mm-hmm. and they're young, stupid children, and we don't need them getting charged with vandalism or something like that. Mm-hmm. So we ended up not having to call them, I don't think. I don't know. I remember a very tense post-church lunch, and we were all at a restaurant, and the truth came out, and then my aunt was furious and was like, you got a call, and it was a whole thing. So it was all fun and games until my aunt found out. But I, I kind of, yeah, I don't really, I think I don't think we had to call anyone, but we certainly never did that again. And I think about that every time I see a porta potty with the blue liquid in the bottom and think, God, those poor construction workers that came to work the next day. I rem- And don't you think they assumed it was boys? Not three high school girls. Yeah, probably. There were no boys with us. We weren't doing it to impress anybody. We were doing it to make ourselves laugh. Yeah. And it was stupid. Guys don't ever do it. I remember being accused by the school janitor of going into the girls' locker room with my girlfriend. Oh. I did not do yeah. this. Yeah. But it sure sounds like something I would do. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So you're like, I see why you'd assume this, but I actually didn't. That's the right. worst when you and, have. Yeah. And then I it went up the chain to the principal of the high school, and he was about to call me in, and I was going to get suspended, or I don't know what was yeah, about to happen. because that's a big no-no. My dad was the coach there, and dad goes, what did you do? Did you? And I said, and I thought he's not going to believe me either. Yeah. But for some reason, he did. I guess the way I sold it, or I didn't sell it, I just told the truth. I go, yeah. Dad, I didn't do this. Yeah. And, and you thought, you were pretty good to cop to bad stuff, weren't you? Well, most, not always, but most okay, of the so time. Okay, so no. I mean, if, if the jig is up, the jig is up. Yeah. If you you're know, dead to rights, I mean, that it's time, best to just go ahead and start crying. I forged my dad's name on a paper that a teacher wanted me to have him sign because I was talking. What? That I knew crazy. I had, I was locked down. There was nothing to do there yeah. once I was caught. Yeah, that's not good. Because I knew dad knew he didn't sign There's it. nothing like the sick feeling of when you're caught. Yeah. I remember, though. I mean. So what happened? 
Your well, dad went to bat they, for you and said he didn't yeah, do it. Yeah, he goes, he didn't do it. And, and they believed my dad, I guess. But, it, oh, I hated that janitor. Mm-hmm. Because why would you say that? Maybe he saw you saying goodbye to her, and then he just, maybe saying, he turned around she and you walked to away. Go change. Yeah. It was just her and I in the gym. Yeah. She went to go change, use the bathroom, whatever. I'm out there shooting baskets. I didn't go in there. Mm hmm. Anyway, it was just infuriating to be falsely accused. It's terrible to be falsely accused. It is. Yes. Yeah. Right. Boo! Um, Okay. What was I about to say? There was a story I had. Street signs. But you said you wanted me to finish that story. But I was launching into something delicious. (laughs) It was so good. I said the street sign story. I said the porta potty. Just 30 seconds ago. You you said well for what happened and I was about to tell Janet you. St- oh, the forging your dad's signature. Yeah, but there was another story oh, Lee, that I, I was keep- launching, and now it's <laughs> gone into the ether. Okay, if it was that important, it have I told you when they life changing one of my dad's best stories from vet school? Which is? they used to use ether to put animals under when they were mm-hmm. doing surgery. Mm-hmm. Well, there was a little incident, and they were doing surgery on a bird. And they had used ether for it, and something ignited, mm. and fried, suddenly fried the, the room was filled with feathers. Yeah, and no bird. Yeah, and they had to tell. I think it was like a something very minor. My dad was just like they're observing or learning, and the bird did not. Was it a pet bird? Yeah. So this was somebody that was getting free health care. Yeah. At the vet school, and yeah. they singed like, the bird. Yeah, I can't remember something ignited. They someone lit. Uh, something Mm -hmm. and ether is highly flammable and it dad said literally it was like a magic trick it was like and it was just feathers that's my favorite sound to make yeah so anyway all right well Please finish your story. That was I don't so know. I delicious. Can't, I can't remember that. You were talking about not in the janitor's thing. Then you were talking about, or not in the locker room. Then you said the thing, you forged your dad's signature. Yeah, but that uh, that story's not it. Oh, my gosh. Damiano. Go see our friends there. They are the sponsor of today's episode. We highly recommend it. They are so delicious. You've heard us talk about them ad nauseum. Please go see them and tell them Lee and Haley sent you. Located on UK's campus right there on South Upper Street. They've got a pretty big parking lot behind and on the side of the building. Um, It is free to park there, which, you know, any downtown area that is very clutch when it comes to dining out. Check them out for lunch, dinner, etc. On the weekends, you're going to love it. Thanks for listening, guys. We appreciate it. We'll see you next time here on Lee and Haley Overtime, the podcast. Hang in there. We love you. God loves you. God bless America. Let's rock on.